I would like to present, uh, to give you the introduction and present you Mr. Cyril Griff from the European Investment Fund uh, who, with the headquarters in, uh, in Luxembourg. Luxembourg, uh, Cyril will explain on how on the products of the European investment funds, uh, how to co-fund with them, how to attract funds from them. Uh, there are various products for business angels, for venture capital funds, and so on and so on. Also for various geographical mandates. And uh, he will do a presentation, and we really encourage you to have the open discussion and open questions for Cyril. Uh, we are self, um, myself and my, co my partner Pierre is here. Uh, we are, we uh, have been through the, the due diligence process with the EIF and uh, Cyril personally was, is our investment manager. And uh, we will at the end show the, our real case, uh, how did we come to the point where we are. And uh, we are at the point that uh, EIF would be the principal, um, uh, in, when I say principal, it's 49% investor in our uh, fund for Croatia and Slovenia. So this is for the introduction and then, Cyril, it's up to you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Renata. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So indeed, um, Cyril Guifes, working for the European Investment Fund. I don't know how familiar you are with the European Investment Fund. It's actually um, the European Investment Fund was created in 1994. So yeah, more than 20 years now. Um, we are part of the European Investment Bank Group. Perhaps uh, European Investment Bank uh, is more known to some of you around here. Um, thanks. Um, so the European Investment Fund the overriding mandate and uh, raison d'etre of the European Investment Fund is to increase access to finance for European SMEs. So uh, we have w different uh, areas of consideration, obviously the European Union, also neighboring countries, uh, European economic area. area. Um, so that's for the geography and why was uh, EIF uh, founded in the first place. So by, increase to ac by increasing access to capital for European SMEs, uh, we uh, uh, just need to clarify a couple of things here. We are an indirect investor. So that means we are not investing directly into companies. We are an indirect investor. So that means if you wish to, to, to take a, a, a metaphor, let's say we are wholesalers. So we are not doing any retail investments. But we are wholesalers, meaning we are, is, we are uh, managing two types of different financial products. One is equity and one is guarantee. So starting on the guarantee side, where I do not work and where this presentation is not about, but just to, for you to have an idea, guarantee, we would be issuing a guarantee to a bank, any bank that usually does corporate loans. Uh, we would issue a guarantee to that bank so that they can unlend a portfolio of uh, loans, uh, debt product to SMEs. On the side of the business I'm working on, so the equity side, uh, the main uh, way we do intervene on the market is by managing fund of funds. So a bit of a barbarian name to simply say that we are investing in funds that invest into startups, SMEs at large. So I have only one slide. I don't want to uh, uh, overburden you with a number of slides. And these slides, where I'm going to go into greater details afterwards, but this slide is here to give you uh, uh, information around how, uh, uh, what are our screening filters, on what type of elements do we make our judgment, do we make our investment decisions. Uh, and uh, again, I'll get back to that uh, later. Just to give you an idea also of uh, what we are uh, dealing with. So I'm sitting on the venture capital team of EIF. So that means we are investing across venture capital funds in Europe. And we, uh, last year we invested 1.7 billion euros in some seven, uh, yeah, 50 funds, 50 venture capital funds. The other part of our business on the equity side is called uh, a lower mean market, or if you wish, private equity. 
So again, I'm focusing he here the presentation on the venture capital side of our business and these, no matter whether you're doing impact or life science or biotechnology, this will always be the way we are looking at an investment proposal and uh, based on this triangle here, we would uh, be able to move ahead and push forward the investment process. Uh, now, um, across our different venture capital business line, I'm dealing with social impact and un environmental impact, and that's why uh, uh, we have discussed with Pierre and Renata here, who are also going to share their view on how it is to work with us and go through our, our process, which... Uh, uh, hopefully they won't spare any detail and, and share uh, everything you need to know around uh, how it is, easy or not, uh, practical or not, slow or not, um, to get to that point in time where we can sign our commitment in a fund. Um, I was just mentioning that, yes, across the board, on our venture capital segment of the market, we have invested 1.7 billion last year. We will do roughly the same this year, 2019. And fair to say that out of this uh, significant figure, a small portion is only uh, targeting impact funds. And this is not because we would not wish to do more. But again, that falls back to the comment I was saying, ma making earlier that we are wholesalers. So we do have capital to invest, but if we do not find, or if we are, or if we are not approached by intermediaries in this particular market segments. Obviously, uh, uh, the, the, the capital stays on the, on the bank account and is not invested, which is obviously a situation we're trying to avoid. Also, that's one of the reasons why I'm here today and uh, uh, making sure that uh, these monies and this uh, uh, organization I'm working for is not seen as uh, you know, a virtual thing that uh, no one can access. It's actually, uh, uh, it's actually possible. And again, Renata, Pierre, you make give a word on that. Um, what do we mean by um, impact investing? So uh, by impact investing, we mean uh, we are not a, a philanthropic uh, institution, it's fair to say. So that means we are set up as a, an investment fund. Yes, we do have a clear and obvious political objectives, uh, but we are a financial institution. So that means when we are investing in impact funds, we are not investing with the assumption that you know, the money is gone and this is soft money. We are investing in impact funds because we are convinced that there is actually a positive correlation between the impact that can be generated by companies, by fund managers and companies, and a positive correlation between fi uh, financial performance and impact. So we, that's, that's really at the heart of our investment strategy and important to bear in mind because there, there are always constant debate around impact investing industry. Uh, are we talking an impact about an impact first industry or finance first industry? Uh, in our view, again, the two are positively correlated. So we have some experience now uh, doing investments in uh, impact funds. We've invested in 16 impact funds in Europe to date since 2014. Uh, most of them are uh, UK, Germany and France, Italy, but also one in the Netherlands, one in uh, Denmark, one in Hungary. Uh, that was uh, uh, in Q3 this last year, 2018. Uh, so also from a geographical point of view, it's expanding and more and more because hopefully we are uh, uh, trying to be uh, as uh, available, accessible, and also hopefully pedagogic around how is it to get to, uh, uh, to achieve get receiving some funding from our side. Uh, we, we see there are some, uh, some results also in terms of geographic expansion. Um, how many of you, if I may say, if I may ask in the room, are uh, companies or are, uh, entrepreneurs uh, uh, raising a company? And how, how many of you would be investors in such companies? Okay. So again, please, uh, this is, uh, yes, the, the topic of the, this is called masterclass, but obviously uh, we'll make the most if it's as interactive as possible. So don't hesitate to interrupt if you have questions or 
want to make sure, also asking the question to make sure that this session is as useful as uh, possible for anyone. So um, now entering into the topic uh, in more details, uh, uh, how, what, what should matter when it comes to uh, get, uh, get some funding or attract some funding from EIF when you're an investor in companies, when you're so-called intermediary or fund in this case, these, these are all the items we are looking at. And we have to make sure uh, that when we invest in a fund, all those points here and all those uh, items are connected one to another. And again, Pierre and Atta, you'll, make, you, you, you'll highlight that from your end uh, afterwards, but it all starts with the team. So it all starts with who are the people involved in the fund setup. So who will be the invest making the investment decision? Who will be sourcing the companies? Who and how will the investment be made? So um, often, uh, you know, for traditional VCs, the job is certainly relatively easier because we have identified teams who are perhaps raising a fund number three, fund number four. So we have uh, in order to make our due diligence, in order to make our uh, analysis, we do have a number of individuals that we can interview, rely on, to understand what is their proposal. They have a common joint experience working together, and more important, and that's also the key word here when it comes to analyzing, let's say, the team, is the track record. So track record meaning who, uh, who has invested in the past, how have these individuals composing the team invested in the past? What was the performance? Where were the companies uh, based? Uh, what was the type of product? So meaning, are we talking about straight equity into a company, a mix of equity and debt or mezzanine funding? Uh, these are the, uh, this would be the first thing we will be looking at when it comes to analyzing or assessing a proposal. Um, the track record. You have a question? Yeah. 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 Good question. Again, that depends very much on the on the team. The fresher, the better. Obviously, you know, if we can assess a performance uh, that uh, for number of comp transactions that were closed, let's say in the past few years, the more relevant it is for us. Fact is that in the equity business, also uh, you need time for a company. You invest in a company, then the company grows and hopefully does well. But at one point in time, you need a bit of a, a like holding period, perhaps six, seven, eight years before you exit the company and you can show realized performance on your transactions. But we depends very much in this case for if if i may quote you uh, uh, the example of feels good social capital uh, social impact fund we uh, uh, transaction we are closing with renata and pierre uh, uh, the track record was uh, uh, closed let's say in the two year 2000s not necessarily in the given region which is uh, in your case croatia and slovenia so we are assessing this track record not blindly or trying to be not binary and see how at team level this track record can be meaningful and, uh, and relevant. Yes, and if I can just add on, we were a really difficult case because uh, the, the initial point was myself and I was with the zero track record. I was an entrepreneur with many spin-off projects, but I never did the classical investment and exits, and this is what they look for. Then they told me you have to find yourself a manager, the VC specialist, and then I started looking. Then I got an equity manager with an um, equity investment uh, experience, and then I, I thought I was over. But then, and then the months were passing. And then they said, no, it's not okay. You need something with the VC track record, venture fund track record. And uh, coming from the geography in Croatia, we, of course, we, we don't have a social impact venture funds there. Uh, even not the venture fund. So there was not such a person in Croatia and Slovenia. We were really uh, investigated two countries. And uh, luckily a guy came from Egypt <laughs> and he had a super track record, but from years ago and from other geography. 
and uh, and and this is the team that passed finally. So it's it's very personal and it's very flexible, and it's it's very up to you to prove that you are committed to each other, that you really are together here for this thing, that you will stay for this needed number of years and make money. Uh, yeah, because that's uh, th th this is it. So we are, we are always uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, an articulation where we also, as an EU institution, have an interest in you know making sure that these investments are not concentrated in one, two, three, four countries. But the more, and that's why we also we sp we took some time to, uh, to to develop the proposal with Renata Pierre here. Uh, so there's always an articulation between how much we want to, in this case, invest in Croatia, and comp let's say adding uh, competencies, skills, know-how, network in a team, while at the same time making sure that this team can basically stick together for 10 years, because that's what we're talking about. Talking in most, in the vast majority of the cases, venture capital funds are set up as 10 years entities, five years uh, investment period and 10 years to uh, grow your investment, uh, uh, grow the company and find a buyer for your shares in the company. So, so that's the articulation we're trying to, 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 to find and that's also why uh, this takes time because we are not talking about artificially putting together some individualities that perhaps, uh, uh, yes, have the required skill set but also uh, 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 personalities that can work together and, and, and stay committed to the venture for 10 years. So that's obviously something you don't want to go lightly, and that's, uh, that's an important one. Yes, please. You mean an example of companies? Example of companies. Yeah. And these companies have to be already in the portfolio. I mean, when you and Ada apply, yes. have already a portfolio of 10. We need to prove. Companies. Yeah. We, we talked to 78 companies in Croatia and Slovenia. Yes. We needed to show them the deal flow. This was the next stage. Yeah, exactly. That's, that com no, 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 but that's a very good question. That's and at which stage? At seed, at C, at C? All stages. Sector agnostic, all stages. And because. Okay, uh, I, I, I will give a class. Uh, this word impact is, is, is uh, scary for the people who are from pure hardcore finance industry because they mix it with uh, uh, philanthropy and, uh, and this is what we are discussing in all of our impact summits. Uh, but impact is uh, something that goes above the financial return. First of all, it's a fund and it's a venture capital fund. Uh, uh, the financial re return is needed in the first place, but then this project needs to uh, come up with, with an impact. The easiest is that you have in mind the 17, 17 social development goals, SDGs, which is actually everything that uh, uh, the world has come together and agreed on upon uh, to stick to in order to make the world a better place and sustainable place in the next 50 years. So everything is there, women, creativity, water, education, uh, smart cities, um, what, whatever. So every business can uh, have an impact and, and, many biz and uh, the majority of businesses, they have the impact because the uh, primary uh, role of the entrepreneur is that he solves some problem, maybe he's not aware of it. So, uh, the uh, I'm telling you the, the I, I like to tell uh, one uh, deal from, from our flow, which are the which is the engineering company. They do the elevators for the the elevators, but especially made elevators for the for the difficult buildings, B buildings in which uh, which are not interested to the standardized na multinationals such as Schindler, Otis, and all of these big ones, they go into the, into the new buildings. Uh, 
However, in Croatia and Slovenia, these are the countries from former Yugoslavia, from socialism, when the buildings were built and given for free to families in the 70s and the 60s. And the families would uh, get, uh, uh, get a flat in such a building, and these are normally buildings of uh, uh, four to five floors. Uh, now these families are elderly and the people are stuck uh, on the fourth floor with the stairs, they cannot walk. By doing the elevators uh, tailor-made for this, because these are all buildings, they need to figure out how to fit it in. Uh, by uh, doing these elevators, they are improving the quality of life of elderly, not only of elderly, of young parents with babies and so on and they are uh, solving a social problem. And how do we measure it? We measure it by the number of elevators provided, by the number of the users uh, served. And it's a classical engineering business, so nothing... Yes, you can find, but, uh, but you have to measure it and prove it. Yeah. Yeah. So here, uh, uh, what we like to, 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 to build on is the uh, theory of change. So that means you have a company, you have a business that obviously needs input to produce output. The idea is that you fix a social issue by providing a new solution to a status quo that uh, was not overcome before. So Renata's example, there are Plenty of other examples, as I told you, we've invested now in 16 funds that represent like some hundred impact companies. Depending on which market we are talking about, then the impact would be different, obviously. But for instance, uh, the, the, the sectors where we find most impact companies, education, healthcare, uh, energy to some extent, even though these dynamics are also slightly different, but to give you like one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutoring uh, uh, or with technology, do some one-on-one -on -one tutoring around mass for pupils in uh, uh, deprived areas that cannot afford to get some tutoring in mass. With this technology or with such uh, a business model, you uh, sell that to schools and those schools uh, will see uh, the, 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 the grades of the people, of the pupils improve. And by improving your grades in mathematics, obviously your prospects also to access better universities improve. That's one example in many. Yeah, good question. The thing is that in any case, when you invest, uh, nobody invests in order not to have impact. So it's true that perhaps the impact adjective is not the most, you know, the, the, it's certainly very catchy and very speaking. But again, when you invest in a fund, no matter what and no matter where, you do so because you expect an impact. So on your example, uh, indeed, we do have uh, plenty of uh, life science, uh, med tech funds. Uh, not all of them would, uh, you know, uh, strictly speaking, abiding to this so-called theory of change, have the resolution of a social issue in their core. When we invest in impact funds, an important thing to mention is that, you know, the carried interest or the financial incentive of the manager is not only linked to financial performance, but also to social impact achievement. So that means that would be one difference. First of all, in the definition of the type of companies you're investing in. And second, there is an alignment of interest between the manager and the investors around achieving and uh, solving certain social issues. I, I, I mean, I'm not a, special, a, special, a specialist in the medtech sector, but you can imagine a number of uh, uh, companies relevant to the medtech sector which would not necessarily qualify as impact companies. So here, in our case, 
a typical impact company in the health tech field could be, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, permanent, uh, and we have a number of companies around that, around uh, uh, be, uh, like uh, psychological support, for instance, <coughs> having through an application, because again, technology is a major uh, mean to achieve impact, have available seven days a week some uh, 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 possibility to dialogue with a, a psychologist if you are prescribed, if you are uh, um, in need of being, you know, uh, supported by a psychologist. <coughs> this, without technology, is very hard to achieve because you know that most cases you need like one month, two months, perhaps six months waiting list before even being able to get an appointment with a psychologist. So this would be an example. Another example could be also around, uh, again, with technology, and we have uh, such a company uh, at site. Uh, you patch a little technologic device on your uh, glasses, if, uh, and if you are uh, um, hearing impaired, this little device with augmented reality will in real time translate from the lips. You know. So even if you don't hear, you can have a, a direct <coughs> uh, 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 discussion with uh, uh, someone or understand someone. For instance, you're sitting at a university, you can attend regular course and you don't need to have some type of uh, uh, special uh, uh, access or uh, facilitated uh, way in order to access mainstream universities. Yes, please. Yeah, we do have uh, some uh, geographic restriction around this uh, uh, impact uh, uh, mandate, which is uh, European Union. In some particular cases, we can also do invest in uh, candidate or potential candidate countries, but these are for uh, more uh, uh, the generalist mandates that we use. So that could be uh, indeed medtech, uh, tech, uh, ICT, regular uh, regular uh, investment thesis. Uh, in this particular case of the impact uh, mandate, we are uh, mainly focused on the European Union. So that means investing in funds that are based in the European Union and that invest, in general we have this rule, that is like two-thirds of the fund is invested in the EU. One-third could be invested elsewhere, provided, uh, uh, yeah, provided the two-thirds are in the EU, and second, that at least the amount we invest or the amount we invest shall be invested two times in the EU. So for instance, uh, in the case of a, of a 30 million fund, 3-0, if we invest 10, 20 should be invested in the EU, 10 can be invest, invested elsewhere. Yes? You mean our ticket? Yeah. It's pretty broad. I mean, the structural limit we have is 49.9%. Mm -hmm. And also because our mandate is to make sure we catalyze as many private monies as possible in the field, we always, uh, 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 yeah, we always seek to be at the, at the right limit. In the past, the highest we've invested is 120 million in, a f in funds of uh, uh, yeah, like 500 plus million. But there are very few funds in Europe the so-called late-stage VCs or gross-stage VC funds that are of this, uh, first of all, that are of this size, and second, that have the ability to raise 400 million from private investors. Can you define private investors? What do you mean? Yeah, good question. I mean, first rule is that we invest on a pari passu basis. So that means like risk, like reward. Already, if this principle is safeguarded, any investor investing next to us would qualify on this pari passu principle. And now, uh, uh, we have invested in funds where, for instance, we invest one third of the fund size, another third is invested by like national promotional institution, uh, like KfW, for instance, in Germany, and one third by private investors. And in this case, private investors would be like pension funds, banks, insurance company, high net worth individuals, family offices. For typically, this is, the, this is the, 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 the investor base we find in impact funds. To be fair, and also because impact uh, investing and impact funds still is seen as an emerging asset class, which is fair to say, uh, 
mainly we would, we would be sitting next to pension funds, foundations, mm -hmm. family offices, and uh, yeah, individuals, private investors. Well, first of all, uh, 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 us uh, having a, a coffee after afterwards, uh, <laughs> that could be one way. F uh, formally, there is, we, we, are, we like to see ourselves as more substance-oriented than form-oriented. So is no, there is no such thing like a call for tender, a call for expression of interest. Yes, there may be formal steps where you would fill in an expression of interest, but basically, it all starts with sending an investment proposal to EIF, and in this case, uh, uh, I, I'm, I can be the recipient of such a formal uh, of such an investment proposal, um, and I'm happy to give you my contact details afterwards. But that's usually how it starts. Now, always and again, Renata, perhaps you can uh, elaborate on that if you wish. Uh, uh, it's not as if we receive a fund proposal, uh, an investment fund proposal and boom, automatically we uh, put it in our pipeline, our deal flow. We do have uh, some discussions around the proposal before it is formally allocated. I think it's always <coughs> healthy to have a bit of, uh, you know, a couple of uh, phone calls, interactions, okay, I don't understand fully your strategy. Is your strategy early stage, like uh, seed, series A, or is it growth more focused on gross investments, like series B onwards, for instance? Uh, so a bit of sanity checks around the proposal, so it's as complete as possible, and at that point in time, we allocate it to, to, to our deal flow. I think it's also uh, fair to say that uh, uh, the landscape, or let's say the market, has changed very much uh, in the last 10 years. So when 10 years ago, perhaps we would receive only, I don't know, 20, 30 proposals a year, Today, or let's last year in 2018, we received like, yeah, 300 proposals. And 300 proposals, roughly, uh, out of which we invested in 50. So, so that's also why it's good to not blindly, you know, submit an, uh, an investment proposal to EIF, but also to have discussions around. So you already get a bit of a feedback, you know. Okay, this proposal is interesting because of the geography. We have few investments in this area, or the strategy. We believe the strategy is uh, meaningful. You know, building or highlighting certain ele certain elements of your proposal obviously help uh, before it gets allocated. Yeah. Well, here. Technically, we can do, but what we would be looking at in this case, obviously, the, this two-third rule on the geographical allocation, but also, again, looking back, looking at who is the team. So that means, let's say, an Asian fund that opened a branch, I don't know, in uh, uh, Munich, whatever. Uh, we will be looking at who are the individuals that are going to make the investment decision. So no matter what, let's say, and again, to be a bit extreme, but even if the, the, the management company has a very strong reputation, but uh, in Beijing, let's say, uh, what would matter to us is not necessarily the reputation. Yes, it counts, but what would count or what would prevail is who are the individuals that will uh, run the show or will make the investment decisions, what are their network, uh, what would be their uh, deal flow sources. Uh, again, this would be the first item we would be looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes? Uh, is there any condition for uh, level of credit if the business applied was innovation-based ones? Sorry, I did, I did not get the... Uh, if there's any condition related to level of credit, uh, if it's an innovation-based uh, proposal? <coughs> Uh, you mean at the level of the portfolio companies or at the comp yeah. No, I mean because we have, uh, uh, we have different <coughs> mandates and again I want to avoid using too much uh, uh, internal uh, words and, but uh, we do have dedicated uh, mandates uh, to invest in seed or early stage companies and especially we have one team that is called uh, technology transfer and here the idea is to invest or, s or let's say yeah, invest in a fund that would be focusing on 
for instance, for instance, commercializing patents, commercializing uh, intellectual property that was, for instance, developed in university, research lab. Uh, this is something that is obviously of very uh, crucial importance uh, if we keep in mind the idea that the, the EIF was set up in the first place to also make sure uh, foster innovation in the European economy. This is something that we are definitely uh, looking at, yes. So to continue, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that again, there are some, yeah, there are some slight nuances, you know, depending on uh, impact mandate, technology transfer mandate, life science, but the, this is the, let's say, the principle. And again, if you have more precise questions, happy to take them, uh, uh, but that's the key principle you should have in mind. If, again, and to put, uh, uh, or to, to be very clear on this aspect of technology transfer and IP and uh, commercializing patent, for instance. I mean, the deal flow sources in this case are of a key importance. So what are your uh, partnership with universities, research labs? Um, so if you are, let's say, based in uh, Helsinki and you want to do that all over Europe and two thirds in Europe and two, one third in Asia, then we will be challenging you very much around, okay, but what is your access to the university, I don't know, in uh, uh, um, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Shanghai, whatever. Because this, this is a very much, uh, you know, the earlier you invest in a company, as an investor, the closer you need to be to the entrepreneur, right? So this is something we would be looking at. But it's uh, technically possible, yes. Um, just to, to uh, uh, advance a little bit, so, so that again here, the team would be the first element of, uh, of, of we would be looking at, next to uh, the market here. So for instance, I don't know, uh, setting up a, a 150 million fund for a, a country like, uh, I don't know, uh, the Baltics or Estonia, uh, certainly is very, is perhaps a bit oversized. So that's always around looking at what has the <coughs> team done in the past, so looking at the track record of the team. How does that connect with the investment strategy? Is this the same type of company you would be backing, the same stage, the same geography? Is the geography <coughs> here, the market, uh, relevant? Is the size of the fund relevant for this market? And that's also why it comes this point here. So yeah, the size of the fund uh, and some more econom general economic terms around what what is the level of management fee? Uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, yeah? What what is expected to be invested in companies out of the total fund size? Uh, uh, the some sorts the economic viability, let's say, of the proposal. Yeah. Uh, did you ask for a co-investment plan besides the underlying fund? Uh, we are we so yeah depends. That means. In general, we do not co-invest outside of the fund because the first reason why we invest in the fund is we would like the investments to be coming out of the fund. But when we negotiate a limited partnership agreement, we are uh, fine with co-investment rights. So that means in some particular instances, investors in the fund can co-invest on top in a co-investment vehicle in a company in a portfolio company of the fund. This is possible. Obviously, that requires also a good conflict of interest management. So you know, uh, around uh, the valuation of a company, when is the company? Uh, I mean, yeah, when is the contract with this company signed with the fund? When it is, when is it signed with the co-investment vehicle? Who are the ones uh, making the decision? Are there any management fees applied on this co-investment vehicle? How does that uh, contradict or not the economic interest of the LPs in the fund? So something that, yes, we see very often and that can work, provided there are certain conditions attached next to it around focusing on, in this case, conflict of interest would be the key thing. How yeah. do you define uh, presence in Europe? I mean, uh, if, if, if a company has a team in Europe but sells uh, in China or mm. is owned by Chinese or, yeah. or whatever it is, yeah. what's the definition of, your, of a European company? So here, uh, what we, uh, how we define that is companies being based and active in Europe. So 
what does that mean in practice? You have, a, you have a, 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 like a, a human, human resources, a team based in Europe. The product that is developed by, or service that is developed by the company is at least partly in Europe. But then obviously in the life cycle of a company, uh, you have investors coming on board. If the company is growing and successful, you would have investors, uh, potentially some non-European investors. One growth path also for the company is perhaps to, in, to, to grow outside Europe and go international. This, uh, in this case, I mean, means there is a success. That's a success for the company. So that's something we are fine with. What prevails is, at the moment of the investment, is the company based and active in Europe. And based and active doesn't have really a, a clear definition there. It's case by case basis. So it's, it's a case by case basis, yes. Uh, you know, we've invested, for instance, uh, several examples in mind, a company based in uh, uh, London that soon after the investment from the fund we were invested in grew into the US. That's at the moment of the investment. So obviously they do have a, uh, an activity that is still in the UK growing into the US. A large part, for this particular case, a large part of the revenue mm -hmm. of the company stem from a contract they've signed with a state in the US. That's, uh, again, the, 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 the normal uh, path of a company being backed by a, a venture capital or impact fund. I would like to add on here. Yeah. Because we had an example in our deal flow, which I was especially proud of. Uh, I found a great girl who uh, had uh, some uh, mobile app on, uh, it, has, it was related to the early education and uh, parents spending more, children, uh, more time with children and it was very social impact and she was originating from Croatia and the team was from Croatia and they did everything and they were already scaling and for me she was my best example because they were scaling and selling in the States and she had results but then uh, when we presented it in the deal flow, uh, there was an ex objection from this gentleman saying that uh, she doesn't produce impact uh, at home, that she should grow from home first, from Croatia, uh, through the EU, EU, and then in this concentric uh, way. So, uh, uh, and this is because of this impact mandate. So it's not just uh, uh, the financial return, but uh, in, uh, in uh, producing impact. Yeah, that's a, a good question for the moment. Uh, I mean, we are expecting, obviously, end of March, uh, uh, some more clarity. Clarity we do not have, at best, yeah, or if one can speak at best about this, this uh, issue. So, yeah, when we invest, it's for 10 years, in the fund that's set up for 10 years. For the moment, fact is that we have visibility only for six, uh, six months, uh, or even two, two, two months now. So. Uh, we need to cover for the situation where end of March uh, the UK is no longer an EU member as much as it could also very well be that it stayed you know, within the EU. Again, we don't know. Um, so uh, this, is, uh, this then falls under the two-third rule uh, uh, that I mentioned earlier. Um, that's like the worst uh, case uh, basis. So that means we still have a lot of our investments, a number of our investments, or the capital that we invest in funds that goes into the UK. But that's, uh, uh, let's say, if you are a management company based in London investing exclusively in the UK, uh, with the current situation, for us, it's, uh, 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 we, uh, we, we have several instances like that. And for the moment, unless or until there is clarity on what is exactly the statute of the UK, uh, these uh, uh, proposals are uh, uh, very hard for us to uh, push through. So again, we, 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 we have a number of cases where um, the funds are based in a management company based in London, investing 50% in the EU, 50% in the UK. And this we can do, it's just that we need to tailor our tickets to make sure that uh, the, the, the let's say geographical rules apply, but uh, that's so that that's what happens. The main difference between what we were doing in the UK two or three years ago compared to now is that uh, we have an issue with funds that are invested 100% in the UK. 
So we are seeing a number of uh, creative elements around, you know, setting up uh, uh, side vehicles that have a UK, pure UK angle, while the main vehicle would have EU slash UK angle. So quite a lot of, uh, we did not stop investing in the EU, but the way we do it changed in the UK. But the way we do it uh, uh, changed uh, uh, compared to three years ago. Uh, <clears throat> then, uh, uh, just a couple of, uh, of words also on uh, things that are important that we look at when it comes to uh, as, uh, analyzing uh, an investment fund is the um, uh, alignment of interest item here. So when we invest in the fund, we expect also the team to personally invest in the fund. So again, that's for what we call the alignment of interest. It's, it's always like, you know, uh, in order to be convinced to jump on the boat, we have to feel that the team is already on the boat. You know, so that's this kind of reasoning. So as much as that uh, uh, concerns, let's say, the team commitment, what the manager of the fund invests personally into the fund also ties with the reward, let's say. So first of all, as an investor in the fund, if you're doing good with your investment, you will uh, get your money with a premium uh, at the end of the fund. But there is also uh, the, the, the carried interest or the variable incentive here. There is a, we, we like to work with independent teams. So that means uh, individuals that are fully full owners of the management company, because this way we avoid situations where we do a due diligence on one, two, three, four individuals. But in the end, they're employed by a management company that is bigger than only this fund and we have no control around them being perhaps fired from one day to another. This setup is, uh, uh, we, 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 we in, general, in general, we do not invest in this setup for this particular reason. What also is important for us in a, in a, in a, uh, by, by, by definition is that we like to see that the team in charge of the fund is the one financially rewarded if the fund does well. And that's the, 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 the alignment of interest. So uh, this is something that is also true for impact funds. Again, we believe there is no, you are certainly, you are perhaps not in a maximizing business, but there is no structural reason why investing in an impact company cannot generate financial performance. And that does not mean being faking the impact, uh, but the two are correlated. And we, we believe in a world that is such that obviously uh, all innovation around, yeah, from education, to uh, having a more efficient healthcare system, uh, to energy and environment, these are also, in the end, opportunities. I mean, the one that uh, find ways to clean the ocean out of the plastic will have a very positive impact on the environment, but also will certainly have a lot of clients. So this carried interest, uh, uh, we also view as a healthy sign that uh, if the fund does good, it's the team in the first place, that is uh, uh, rewarded for uh, fund the fund doing good. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's overall uh, uh, what I want to <laughs> share with you uh, uh, in terms of you know what are the important items that we look at when doing an investment uh, uh, analysis. Um, obviously, happy to take any further question. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to share with you this afternoon. Renata, do you, are you uh, willing to also discuss more in detail the, like your experience or what's your, yeah? I mean, I can tell in, in five, 10 minutes if you are interested just in, in the normal words, how it uh, went actually and, 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 and about our fund. So we are uh, Feels Good Social Impact Investment Fund, uh, and uh, we we, we are uh, targeting Croatia and Slovenia. Why? Because we are from Croatia, the team, and uh, Slovenia is our neighboring country, and we are both small markets. And then we have uh, discussed and decided that we go with those, these two countries. The other reason is that uh, the. Um, circular economy, social enterprises, and all of this social impact uh, philosophy is very, very well developed in Slovenia by chance. 
because they had a great uh, guy as a state secretary for 10 years for this topic and Slovenia is number one in Europe um, in the legacy and legislation of all of this. So, uh, and they have very, uh, and the awareness is, uh, de was developed there. On the other hand, uh, the market is small. Croatia has the biggest, bigger market. So these were the two countries. Then we have come to the, to the size of the fund. We are raising a 30 million fund, uh, which means that we have applied with EIF for the half of it, for the 15, and which means that, need to, that another 15, we need to find ourselves uh, um, uh, with the matchers. Uh, so this is another, these are all parallel exercises. Uh, then we, uh, in the process, uh, uh, then about the team I told you, first it was one, then two, then three, then four, and uh, we have changed, um, it is my, it was, uh, what is now, this was my second team. Actually, it took us two years, uh, and when Cyril now said that uh, you receive 300 applications and then 50 are, are, uh, go through, it's not that they just uh, uh, cross out these 250, you're not, you're not, you're not. They, they really uh, help in the process and I really can wit witness that uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the team is very entrepreneurial. This is, these are entrepreneurial projects for, for, for the EIF and they are, I, I must say that Cyril was a business angel in this process for us and, and with us. So he would come in back and forth to us, uh, correct this, uh, do your homework on that and so on and, and so on. And it took us two years since the first day, wasn't it like that? Yeah, uh, but, um, and then in, in the moments when I said I'm fed up, I don't want, <laughs> this is too much, I, I don't want to do it anymore, he would say, no, you're at 99%, please do, do <laughs> this one more thing, one more thing. And this one more thing is always another month, another two months, and so on. And it's, uh, uh, and uh, uh, at the end, I uh, I am of impression that this is also a, a part of a strategy serial. That and the pr part of the testing the commitment of the team because every every normal businessman would leave after three months and go to another project and say <laughs> go with your <laughs> money but then uh, if you uh, if you are patient enough to stay and to push for it and because you need to because the time changes in parallel the situation on the field uh, at home is different after two years, so you're constantly updating your business plan, which is also a normal entrepreneurial thing in, 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 the, in the world today. So this is where we are, and, uh, uh, and then uh, in, in every stage of the process you think you're done and it's over, then another new set of tasks opens. So we hope to, to um, get the, the approval of the, of the EIF board next month, and, after, and it's not over. And after that, then uh, the, the thing starts with the legislation, with the register, with the Croatian regulator, and um, all of these jobs. But we think we will be operational as of uh, before the end of this year. And uh, we are happy for that. Is it? Yeah. Ask, ask, yeah. I want to know, um, would you have liked to join the other funds, national funds, to work in a true guide? Who? I, I didn't get Other national funds. There are, there are funds to the world working in the venture capitalism. I want to know that EI have liked to work with these funds jointly or in the common sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, plenty of... Uh, uh, um, plenty of other fund of funds or let's say investors in uh, VC funds. Uh, uh, yes, we do, we, 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 we like uh, to, 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 I mean, raising a fund is always a very uh, team, team type of work. You will never find a, a fund with one, even three investors in general, we're talking about many more. So uh, yes, we do. And so that's why we are also, uh, 
uh, doing a lot of reference calls. When we invest in a fund, we like to also call the other investors in the <coughs> fund to understand their opinion. We do have our own uh, screening uh, and due diligence process. So we make decisions on our own uh, uh, independently. But for sure, we, we, we like to, to uh, reach out to investors also because uh, in general, when we invest in funds, depending on which thematics, but we often find the same type of co-investors than we are, that are, uh, yes, financial institution, but also having uh, one way or the other a policy angle. So we are, for instance, uh, investors in, uh, if it's good, first-time fund, first-time team in Croatia. Uh, we are also an investor in Atomico, for instance. So very renowned uh, VC in Europe, because we, be, we believe that as much as it's important to foster, let's say, e, uh, yeah, social impact, environment innovation, it's also equally important to support, uh, let's say, the European champions. And obviously, you find very different type of co-investors in the, in the, across, across the, the spectrum and across the market. Uh, I would say uh, uh, we, we uh, yeah, we, we some instance invest next to um, the IFC uh, or some, you know, uh, BPI in France, KFV in Germany, but also we are very much used to investors <laughs> such as uh, AXA, <coughs> such as uh, BNP Paribas. So, yeah, a wide variety of investors. Uh, okay. Sorry, uh, how long did it take to be from the first meeting to you know, closing the year? I think it took about two years. What, what are sort of yeah. the typical range? Depends, really. I mean, you mentioned that uh, it's, do, it's doing. No, no, no. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. But it's so we're not doing on purpose. You know, we are uh, definitely never sitting on a proposal and wait. You know, to test the resistance of the of the team. But uh, in this case, in your case, indeed, we are talking about two years because you initially we initially met you, Renata, and so our first uh, our first feedback was to say, okay. We want to work on this proposal together because the first time uh, impact fund in Croatia is something we would love to back. But to get there and to do so, you need to have a team that is able to, I mean, I'm not repeating myself, but these two. So I would say uh, 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 two years was, is, a, is, a, is a bit of an extreme case where we, it's actually about doing things for the first time in a country where there is no equivalent. So, I mean, yeah, you don't do that in six months. When it comes to uh, uh, looking at a fund that already has a track record, joint experience, and a positive uh, fin um, has managed to demonstrate positive financial performance in the past, it can be yeah, it can be six months from nine from yeah six months to, to two years is certainly a fair representation. That always obviously depends on the reactivity of the team in front of in front of us. And again, in your case, we never. We never really uh, sit back and, and, and just wait for another five months. It's always iterations. Uh, we asking such a thing. The team prepares the information, send it back to us, us analyzing. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a lot about also the reactivity of the partners on the other side of the table. Uh, it is a question. When you first applied, so they Yes, but uh, we had uh, the <coughs> idea who, who would uh, more than 50% of the ventures be. Could, could commit. Yes. Who could so commit. you could come and say the seven or five million. Yes. Uh, to say that, okay, I have for confidence this will happen. Yes, and you can get a soft co commitment from yes. them, but you, uh, only after you have it all done and you come to the point that we are now, we will now get a fact commitment. And we are now seriously raising and publicly raising. And also, when you it was just me. It was just me. I was promoting my projects. Actually, I was talking about this science center project and, uh, that Helena was uh, talking in the lunch now. And I was an entrepreneur. 
doing spin of uh, projects in education and chasing money around Europe for them. Investing to some like, small angel investments myself okay. into them. And then uh, 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 I, I had the, the social impact investment hub as an NGO in Croatia, the group of all of okay. these uh, science promoters. And I met people from uh, Cyril's colleague on a conference like that. This was literally like that. And he said, why don't you turn your social impact investment hub into the venture fund? I could give you money. And then I said, yes, why not? Not knowing what I'm about to go through. <laughs> and this is how this started. <laughs> and that's it. So, so your partner joined the team in six months, let's say. Yes. And now you are six. No, I, I, I had two team. partners and so now we are a four persons team. Four, four persons. Three, you? four persons. Uh, you plus three. Yes. And the, re the, the rest of the team is the experienced VC. Okay, Pierre will tell. Ah, rest of the team are, are very, are top notch financial okay. advisors. For example, I will present now Mr. Pierre Matic. This guy was the uh, was the director of the main reg of the regulatory agency of Croatia for six years, and he joined as a fourth member of the team. When the th time has come for us to work heavily on the legal documents on the legislature, so when we passed all of this here <laughs> business, yeah, and, and then 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 Pierre uh, joined. Uh, Pierre, you can tell your experience. Okay, hello everyone. Just to help a little bit, Cyril. It sounds like he's a bit sadistic, but it's not. To, to be really honest, uh, the two years, you, you must uh, think that uh, we had to present a uh, deal flow. And the bulk of the work was finding the companies, uh, discussing with the companies, doing due diligence with the companies to be able to present to the IF some relevant deal flow. Because uh, as has already been uh, said, it is the first time uh, fund, a social impact fund in the country where even venture capital funds are scarce. Uh, so this was much of the work. Uh, it's not like uh, the AF is a kind of a bureaucratic uh, octopus. No, they are really very uh, open. The discussion flows easily. That this is not uh, filling forms. Oh, sorry, you missed uh, some letter on page 24. Absolutely not. The, the bulk of the work was on, on the deal flows and analyzing all the companies. So regarding the team, unfortunately, our VC guy couldn't uh, make it to Istanbul uh, this year. He was here, I think, last year. Yes, and he was really uh, crucial to our team because he uh, he has a very relevant uh, venture capital experience in the Middle East and uh, in the so uh, Soviet republics in uh, Central uh, Asia. Uh, Renata is an entrepreneur in Croatia very well known in Croatia for uh, social entrepreneurship. And me and uh, another colleague are, uh, as you call it, uh, hardcore financial guys. So, uh, so we were working in uh, investment funds and pension funds uh, before. And I also spent uh, six years as a market regulator. So this now puts me in a position to be uh, also kind of a compliance uh, officer of the company. Uh, how much this is important, it really depends on the regulatory uh, framework in uh, each individual country. Uh, Croatia, well, Croatia has the habit of wherever the European directive says the member states can impose stricter rules, well, Croatia imposes stricter rules, so it, it requires a compliance officer, uh, but in many other countries for a small, uh, as you know, for small alternative fund management companies, uh, requirements are really not that uh, strict. That's it, thank you. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Sure. Uh, do you have a, do you do secondary investment? And if not, don't you think that it's an interesting tool to bring liquidity to the market, uh, to encourage the private sector to commit capital to venture uh, one. So we don't do ourselves secondary, but because we have a portfolio of uh, uh, like, I, I think 700 uh, equity funds, VC, private equity, some of these funds are in their <coughs> yeah, eight, nine, 10 plus years. Uh, so we are dealing a lot with secondary clients, so like 
clients interested in acquiring the shares we have in funds. We our acquiring those shares. Yeah, exactly. Being on the sell side. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So we are on the sell side. There are a lot of discussions <coughs> around our role also on the secondary market. For the moment, we do not have such a thing, but we are uh, looking. We are looking at uh, uh, the. We are looking at this, you know, because again, we are uh, willing or we have the ambition to act on very uh, different stages of the equity market to also implement that in the future. That's still uh, virtual. That's not the case yet, but uh, we are looking. At And I should say as well that uh, uh, indeed um, uh, we, when we invest in a fund, and that was also I had in mind this uh, this uh, this answer when uh, replying to the gentleman's question here. Um, we we are often, uh, uh, rightfully or not, time will tell, but seen on the market as having some kind of uh, quality seal. So that's why I think uh, often teams start their fundraising with us. And the more they move along, the more uh, uh, it is uh, 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 being in advance discussion with the IF is, uh, uh, serves as a, uh, facilitates, let's say, fundraising from third parties or from private investors. So that's uh, also <coughs> something uh, we, we, we pay attention to and we are always uh, available to discuss uh, 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 with, with other LPs on, uh, to share our feedback and our views on a particular investment, a particular uh, Fund opportunity. Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. So, yes, we are part of the advisory committee. So, the, let's say the committee of the investors, but we are not uh, sitting on the investment committee because this is something that, uh, yeah, is a, we, 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 we legally cannot do that because we have a limited liability status as a limited uh, partner. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's also, also a very good question. That's also why our due diligence process is intense and, and it can be long in some time, in, in some cases. Because in, in your case, Renata, Pierre, we are investing 15 million and we are doing so first and foremost because we trust this team is able to invest in good quality impact companies in Croatia and Slovenia. But once we sign our subscription agreement, we are no, no more part on the investment decision process. That actually was my question. So you're more a financial investor and you're not involved in the growth <coughs> of the participating companies in that case? Yes, no, no. We, 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 are, we are not. We have, again, uh, we have, there are some fairly strict rules around le yeah, legally as an investor you, you should no longer, in the fund structure, uh, in, interfere in the investment decision process. So that's also why we need to have this degree of comfort at due diligence uh, that, yes, we believe that for 10 years, this team will be able to, to, to do. And you are like an anchor investor, right? So that's right. And when other investors come on board, like family offices <coughs> and others, yeah. Do you have a say in the nature of that composition or is that more the manager? No, 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 that's really more the manager. Uh, again, we are used to work with a wide variety of investors from pension funds, insurance companies, banks, uh, foundations, family <coughs> office, private persons. Uh, for us, it's fairly, uh, we are fairly uh, um, indifferent indifference is probably a strong word, but we do not have a say in who should be investing or not investing in the fund. That's very clear. Because also of this principle, what prevails is really the core uh, capacity of the team to, do, to take right decisions. Once we are confident, they have first this competence and second, that the legal documentation will make it impossible for any investors to <coughs> interfere in such a way that investment decisions are no longer independently taken, taken by the team, then we are fairly relaxed on who uh, should be or who are the investors next to us. Maybe Cyril, sorry to interfere. You said you were a member of the advisory board. 
So maybe just to, to clarify a little yeah. bit, what is the advisory board? Yeah. The social yeah. impact? Let's say the, the, the represent, re advisory board, advisory committee, words change indeed from one jurisdiction to another, but that's basically the, the, present at the forum representing the interest of the investors. And in this <laughs> forum, in general, you find uh, three uh, agenda items, let's say, that are in like meetings like once a year. Uh, yes, we receive the quarterly reports uh, to get an update on how is the fund doing, but you generally have such a, a meeting, uh, for, forum meeting once or twice a year. You look at how is the portfolio doing, so how are uh, behaving the investments already closed by the team, perhaps also some elements on what are co what's coming next, so what are the next companies in the pipeline. Second, the, the conflict of interest management. So in case, for instance, I don't know, the fund decides to invest in a company uh, that is managed by, I don't know, a relative of one of the team member or invest in a company that was previously invested by a team member, then we would carefully look and in general, in this case, we need to approve or uh, not approve such an investment because, again, managing all the conflicts of interest. And third, in the particular case of impact funds, uh, the impact measurement, which is also that I did not mention yet, actually, but that is obviously very crucial. We ask when we invest in an impact fund that all the, the, the impact is measured in a, a, a fairly structured way basically identifying <laughs> one to five impact indicator per company. And on each of these indicator, indicator set a quantifiable target at the moment of the investment. So for instance, take uh, the, the mass tutoring uh, uh, company I was referring to earlier, say the number of kids <coughs> from, uh, <coughs> for instance, receiving free meals in the UK, that's an indicator. Those kids are generally from uh, uh, deprived background. Out of these kids receiving free meals, how many have used the service uh, and how has this service had a positive impact on their grade? So have their grade improved? And then you can also follow on by looking at what type of universities they have entered. But, and we would be looking at of, over the whole fund lifetime, how is the company able to reach its target on this particular indicator? So this would be the tasks common uh, for uh, the investors committee, let's say. But, uh, yeah. <coughs> Sorry? In general, what we see, we, we commit. <coughs> so we sign a subscription agreement saying EIF commits to invest up to 15 million in the fund. But then the amounts are called for across 10 years. Obviously, primarily in the first five, when you do the primarily, I don't know, perhaps 60% in the first five years, when you do the initial investments, and also call the management fees, for instance, and the setup at the very beginning. But also in the last five years, when you, you first of all continue to charge fees, you need to pay for the team who is uh, taking care of the investment. And second, you do follow on investments. So that's really uh, a stagger, let's say. <coughs> yeah. I'm glad I could, uh, I could exhaust all your questions. It's a good sign. <laughs> Sure, 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 yes, actually, um, uh, uh, it's not on the slide here, but I have uh, some, uh, some um, business cards here. Uh, I'm not sure I have for everyone, but I'm in any case uh, leaving it here, and uh, I'm leaving it. I'm sorry, I have only uh, one left, but, uh, but please, if you want to take picture or whatever, but I'm uh, happy, uh, happy to take calls, uh, emails, uh, sure.
there on time. Uh, the room is free until four. Next one's next uh, master class is at four, okay. so we can sit, have a coffee, have chats, and thank you for following us.